Check it out, everybody. I'm back on the road, Lincoln Highway, this way. Very cool. I believe I will follow your directions and uh, have some fun today. Well guys, good morning. This is day two out here at Hickinson Petroglyph Campground. I'm gonna take the Canon camera along with me so I can zoom in just in case. But there's a little trail up here with some possible historic petroglyphs. So we'll go check it out. So on the north side of this uh, park, we were, we were at the campground, but here is the uh, little directions for the self-guided walking tour. It says it's uh, 0.6 miles to do the whole loop. So uh, we can go check it out, see what we can find. Yeah. Still a little cold up here at 65,000 feet. So we're gonna see lots of these on the trail. Uh, you actually get pretty close, but you can see some of the etching and carving into it. And so along the trail, they've got these wooden things with numbers, and then you can read the brochure and check it out. Interesting. It does look like some people have come and done their own little carving recently, but you can still see behind it. Uh, I believe that is not original. Another one here, they are calling it their most elaborate one. You can see some monster mountains off in the distance. Oh boy. That's Highway 50 down there. Woo! What a view. So here at this number 8 marker, um, our instructions say that the sagebrush is the official flower of the state of Nevada. I believe that's some right there. Probably not the right season. Uh, but the natives used it for medicine. And some more petroglyphs here. Yeah. No telling how old some of these are, though. Mixed in here, we've got some Indian rice grass, or better known as sand grass, used for cooking. Look at those hillsides, though. It's pretty cool. I think this is the last petroglyph, but next to those numbers, they're calling that right there an, an animal carving of some kind. But this particular rock face has a lot of different kinds of old writings, as you can see. And some more on the back here.
That is my first 100% fully successful flight of this guy since it's mishaps with battery number three. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna take the uh, TW200 out on the road out here. The speed limit out on Highway 50 is 70 miles an hour. Want to see what this thing can do? I have mentioned to you guys before that she will do 70 miles an hour, and that was on, I think, I-10. So we're going to go for a little ride here, get all geared up. Have a good day. This is just a temporary test for the microphone. I don't have it set up, like, for sure. Just want to test it and see how it works. Let it warm up. My only concern is that uh, there may be some wind interference that's going to get underneath the helmet as I'm driving, but uh, we'll just wait and see. <clears throat> as I mentioned, we are up here at about 6,600 feet. The temperature right now is 34 degrees. Although it's nice and sunny, it is cold, guys. Oh, looks like we got some day use visitors sh have shown up. Cool. There's just something really neat about parking the RV over there, getting on the bike, and just touring around. Even if it's cold, it's just fun to have another vehicle to play with. trying the new uh, helmet mount on the camera on the GoPro as well. It's on super wide, so you can see more of what's going on basically. But I would imagine it's not very stable up there, especially as I turn and look for traffic. You know, you guys might get a headache, but it's just the easiest way to do it right now. All right. There's gonna be uh, Highway 50. Going east and west. And uh, we're going to go east. See what we can get her up to here. Hopefully, this audio is usable. I don't know. There's 50 in fifth gear. 55. kind of going uphill right now though. There it is. 70 miles an hour guys on a TW200. Woohoo! 7-1. That's throttle wide open. Wind behind me. Downhill kind of. <laughs> but still, yeah. Now, uh, I wouldn't do 70 mile an hour very long on this bike, but it will do it. All right, we're gonna head back to camp and enjoy the nice sunny day. That's my furnace. And uh, having that thing crank on while I'm in a dead sleep is unpleasant. Absolutely cannot figure out what the heck is making that noise. No matter where I touch on the motor or the fan, I can kind of make it stop, but it's just one of those frequencies that is incredibly unpleasant to wake up to every half hour when the thermostat kicks on. Anyway, why am I even talking about the onboard furnace? Well, ran out of propane for this bad boy, and I'm out here in the middle of Nevada where I get about three to four days of heat um, on that tank and we couldn't find anywhere in the entire city of Austin or we can't find a supplier with a, within 200 miles of the desert now. So it's not even like I could just strap it to my back on the motorcycle and go get more propane. Last night was 16 degrees, tonight is 14 degrees. And so it would be great to run the furnace. I guess I should mention like in an emergency, I can always fire up the generator, run the generator all night, and then use my ceramic heater plugged in as another backup. Because the furnace still works fine, it still blows out heat, turns on when it's supposed to, according to the thermostat. It just makes a horrendous sound that will make it so that I will only sleep 
28 minutes and then every 30th minute wake up to that horrible sound. So that's unfortunate. But this is one of those things I, I try to avoid on the road because if you have just one source of heat and that goes out, kind of, you know, it's unpleasant. Anyway, uh, for a furnace that is, let's see, 17 years old, it may have a bad bearing or the fan or the motor may have a problem in it. There's nothing inside the fan. There's no rock or anything. Uh, it could be a belt or something. Um, and I've done as much digging as I can possibly do. So um, there is always something in an RV that needs attention. Always, always, always something on the list, something breaking and needing work. <laughs> oh my gosh, the altitude is just... Like, my breaths are so short. I can't, it's so hard to breathe up here. For right now, just uh, do what I can do. It's tough because this is one of the nicest campgrounds I've been to in a really long time. And I really, really love it. I really love just the natural setting of it. And I don't want to have to leave for something as dumb as getting more propane. Either in my 20-pound cylinder or getting some work done in the furnace. So, not gonna... Just gonna work through it and fix it later. Nothing I can do about it now. Just uh, sharing it with you. I had an idea to make sure that I'm not ever reliant on the furnace because it's just, you know, it, it actually runs on seven amps. It is that fan that, oh, it's crazy. But anyway, my propane tank here, which is still half full, this monstrous onboard one, I'm gonna put a T right here. I'm gonna put a T right there that'll have a female propane accessory where I can plug in my 12 foot buddy heater cord out the window, out the, out the passenger window and plug into here real quick. And then that'll fix my problem in case I just am in the middle of Nevada on the loneliest road and can't find anybody who sells propane. Okay, so we learned a lesson out here. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, I got everything figured out guys. Don't even worry, don't even worry. Jackson, I'll see you in a couple days back on the Lincoln Highway here. Have a good day guys, bye-bye.